going to talk a little bit about Donald Trump's cabinet, which is quickly taking shape because my next guest is a contender for a spot in that cabinet. Joining me right now, the CEO of Continental Resources, Harold Hamm. Welcome, sir. Good to see you. Well, good to be with you. Uh, look, I, I, let's get this straight. I'm not a, not a contender. Uh, I think I've been, uh, you know, looked at for uh, maybe uh, as a possibility, but certainly uh, I've got a full-time job here at Continental. I love what I'm doing, buying oil and gas, and, uh, you know, we have a future again, and I'm so excited about that. Okay, so, so Harold, the, let me clarify something then, because, uh, you know, we, we've seen numerous reports that you would be the leading candidate for energy secretary. I know Donald Trump has uh, talked about uh, how valuable you have been as an energy advisor to him. Are you telling us you're not considering the job? Uh, I am not considering a job. Uh, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to make, uh, you know, President Trump uh, to the most successful president ever. And certainly if I can do that from the sidelines, I am going to do everything I can. And uh, Has he asked you to take the job? Uh, no, and, and I've, I've, I'm not, uh, I'm not taking the job, and, uh, but. All right. All right. Uh, well, so, you know, Harold, anyway. one of the reasons he sought you out as an advisor is obviously, uh, you know, when it comes to the energy business, you are uh, perhaps uh, the, the most knowledgeable American in this. I mean, you, you've been in that energy business your, pretty much your whole life. Uh, you've built your whole career in an incredible <laughs> company around it. Uh, what excites mm -hmm. you right now about having this president-elect about to take over? Well, I, I'm very excited about the fact that, you know, we can get back from the brink of extinction and have a future here in America as oil and gas producers. And, you know, uh, you know, I spent 50 years, this is our 50th year, and doing what I love to do, and that's buying oil and gas and, uh, and uh, produce for uh, American, American consumers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've Right now is the uh, great times in America, you know, with horizontal drilling and bringing on uh, uh, vast new supplies of oil, of oil and gas. We've done and and that. are we going to be able to really increase our supply here in the U.S.? I mean, you know, there, there was a lot of uh, trepidation about that with the Obama administration. Is that going to change, Harold? Uh, certainly it's going to change. I mean, you get the right people in the right places here and, and, and quit targeting I want gas to put us out of business. I mean, that, that was what's going on, and, mm -hmm. and certainly the Clinton administration meant to do more of the same. So uh, we're, we're very excited about uh, you know, the Trump administration going forward. All right, speaking of uh, Donald Trump, there's his plane. It just landed there in Indianapolis. He's going to be making his way to the carrier facility to talk to workers there. He's managed to save roughly 800 jobs. 600 jobs will still be going to Mexico, but, you know, in a glass half full world, 800 sure counts for something. And most importantly, it's interesting, Harold, to see that businesses, business leaders are responding to Donald Trump. I mean, you think about Ford for example, saying they're going to keep some jobs in Louisiana. Uh, you now see, of course, the carrier example. Uh, you know, look, I mean, it, it sounds like there's a new sheriff in town and CEOs are recognizing it. Is that fair? Yeah, well, you know, nobody wants to leave America and go anywhere. We, we just need a, a business environment that, uh, you know, that, that we can be successful here in America. Nobody wants to go anywhere. So, uh, you know, that that's certainly our true for me and true for our industry and, and true for all Yeah, but Harold, they've been know. kind of forced to, right? I mean, you, you get pretty onerous taxes, you get a lot of regulation in the U.S., and let's not forget, you get cheaper workers abroad that are willing to do the job for a whole lot less. So I hear you. No one wants to leave. What do we need to do as a country to encourage them to stay? Well, the, the easy thing to do, one thing, is back off on some of the regulations. I mean, it's a very costly to operate here in America. Can, uh, compared to, to Mexico, uh, for sure. So back off on some regulations that, uh, you know, a lot of those are punitive in nature, and back off on those and, and make it where uh, companies can produce their goods right here in, in, in America. Mm -hmm. And certainly taxes, uh, yeah, that, I think that will be... Uh, <laughs> You know, job number one uh, as this administration goes forward. It, can I ask you, sir, about oil prices? Because, wow, <laughs> what a couple of days it's been, right? I mean, this was in reaction to OPEC, uh, of course. But w what do you think right now? We're looking at above $50 a barrel, Harold. Uh, is that upside going to continue? Or with some more supply coming on via the U.S., are we going to see prices stuck in a range? 
Well, you know, prices have been artificially suppressed low uh, as uh, the Saudis, and uh, you know, basically uh, brought pressure on on, on uh, OPEC members and mm -hmm. also other non-OPEC members uh, to cut supply and and uh, help reduce the uh, uh, production in the world. Uh, you know, we've had a, a big overhang of inventory, even though. Uh, we have seen uh, the rebalancing occur between supply and demand at okay. the end of the second quarter of this year. But uh, yeah, there's some there's some uh, uh, ways to to run. Okay. Like well, how, how much ways? I mean, you, you, can you can you give me a sense of where you would see, say, oil prices? And I just have 20 seconds, but six months out, Harold. Well, you know, I, I'll just give you a, a, my thick, a, a quick <laughs> thumbnail. Uh, I said that. Uh, that we would see 60 by year end. I think that was right on. And I think we would have had, had a deal been made sooner or uh, not involved in the process, you know. Okay. But, you know, uh, so we, 60 bucks by year end, you're still, you're still December 31st. I mean, that, that, that's a heck of a run we could still see in the next couple of weeks. Well, yeah, we're, we're first of December, so January 1st, you got All a full right. month to run. It could certainly happen. All right, Harold Ham predicting $60 a barrel by the end of the year and saying he will not take the position uh, in, in Donald Trump's cabinet as a Secretary of Energy. All right, Harold, it's good to see you, sir. As always, thank you. You bet. Thank you. Uh